In South Africa, there are concerns about prosecuting those responsible for one of the biggest ever fraud cases following the suicide of former Steinhoff International CEO Marcus Joester. Many hoped he would reveal more about what has been found to be fraud with 106 billion in overstated sales. He took his life in South Africa's Western Cape last week. Around 200 billion rand was wiped out in share value after years to resign and admitted there were problems and then failed to answer the company's board. Many lost their life savings with calls for Yerster to be prosecuted. BGTN's Ray White spoke to Rob Rose, the author of Stein Heist, to find out more. Steinhoff continues to be a hot topic of conversation in South Africa and throughout the world. Within a matter of days, we saw 200 billion rand wiped off the markets. A lot of people are asking, will that money ever return to those who lost that 200 billion rand? Well, joining me is Rob Rose. He's the author of Stein Heist. Hi, Rob. Thanks for joining us. Great to be here, Ray. Take us through 2015 to 2017. What happened with Steinhoff? Well, Steinhoff was coming from a period when it was becoming the world's second largest furniture retailer. It owned companies in Australia, companies in Europe, Conforama in Europe. It was this massive entity. It had bought Pepco in South Africa, which included Pep and Ackermans and some of the biggest brands. So it was a really, it was a monster. Um, but what happened in 2015 is that the German authorities raided Steinhoff in Europe. They felt that there was some fraud going on, so they raided it on the eve of its listing in Frankfurt, which was meant to be Steinhoff's big homecoming. Um, and two years later, in December 2017, um, Marcus Joester, unable to answer queries from the auditors, sort of tearfully handed in his resignation to the chair, Christo Visser. And the next morning, um, the next morning, Steinhoff admitted there had been accounting irregularities. Um, but in the lead up to that, and the previous weeks before that, um, they'd asked, you know, where's the money coming from? The auditors couldn't get answers to their questions. And, they, and the auditors said to Christo Visser, who was the chair at the time, do you know that your management has been defrauding Steinhoff of uh, many millions over many years? And, and the company was shocked by this, but it turns out that was the case. So the executive reports to the board, and like you said, we've got Christo Visser. How is it that he knew nothing about what was going on? Well, Ray, that's, that's a very good question. I think, I think it's not just Christo Visser, it's the board itself. You know, you have three accounting PhDs on Steinhoff's board and they have an accounting scandal. This is probably the most well-resourced board in South Africa. It's a superstar board. You know, you have people like Johan van Zael, who was the former CEO of Sunlum. You have Steve Boyson, who was the former CEO of Absa. You have really fantastic people on this board, and yet all this slipped through. When you ask Christo Vistra about this, he will point to the fact that all the regulators also let it slip through, that the, re that the auditors also let it slip through, that the bankers who lent it money had been through the accounts and didn't pick this up. So it seems like a massive failure at a thousand different levels. Yeah. When did this start? We, let's go back to 2015. German authorities, they get involved, they start investigating. Did it start back then? When did the rot start? So the rot started long before. Um, a report by PwC, the forensic auditors, said that what had happened is that Steinhoff had defrauded, had created fictional profits of, it was something mammoth, it was 106 billion rand over more than a decade. So this is from 2010, 2011. And the charges in Germany recently against certain of those Steinhoff executives date back to 2011. In the stories we've investigated at, at Financial Mail and Amber Bongani, you know, we, we trace this back many years before that even to when Marcus Joester the CEO of the company was doing deals to benefit himself, doing side side deals that at the expense of shareholders. Um, so it actually went back long before. It seems like a like a long-standing pattern of illicit behaviour at Steinhoff.